Hey guys, it's Catherine from 85th and Pine and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to edit your own photo on Inkscape in order to engrave it on your Glowforge. And I'll be showing you this pet memorial that I made. So we'll be working on the photo, editing the name and the text. So I'm just going to briefly take you through the basic steps of creating a portrait on Inkscape in order to engrave it on your laser machine. So I am just doing this off of my pet memorial that I created and I'll have that file available on my Etsy shop. And I'm just going to take this German Shepherd portrait that I found online to just give you as an example. So let's go ahead and get started on editing this photo in order to engrave it. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to go up to path and trace bitmap. And this is where you're going to have to play around with it a little bit. Um, it just depends on the photo and how you want it to look. But I mainly just use the brightness cutoff and brightness threshold right here. But there's a bunch of other um, options to, to use if you need it. But just to show you what I do, um, I'm just going to start by making it pretty dark just to show you. So I'm going to put it at point 0.60. And click OK. Then I'm going to go over to my photo and drag that off the photo to show you. So obviously that's pretty dark and I don't want that engraved that much. So I'm just going to go back to my trace bitmap and select my photo again. And I'm going to make it pretty light to show you an example and put it at 0.25. Click OK. Go to my photo and drag it off the photo. So that is obviously too light. So now I'm going to select my photo one more time. Go back to my trace bitmap. And put 0.47. Something kind of in the middle of those two. Go back to my photo, drag it down. And that looks a lot better than the first two. So I think I'm happy with this and I'll keep that one, but now I'll delete the other ones. So as you can see, you need to play around with it a little bit and just see what you like the best. So now I'm going to X out of this. And my original photo I'm just going to put to the side over here. So now I have my finished photo. I usually color mine in pink just to mark it as an engraved object. I'm just going to keep it as black for now just to have it clear on the screen. And I'm going to resize it just to put it into my portrait, my pet memorial. So I'm going to put this as my memorial piece of the portrait. So I'm going to want it right here. It's a little bit big, so I'm just going to resize it a little bit more. All right, so that's about the size I'm thinking it'll be. So I'll just leave it there for now. And I'm going to group these two pieces together. So I'm going to select this piece and hold down shift and then select the portrait as well. Then I'm going to go over to object and group. So now it's one piece if I want to drag it around. All right, so now I'm going to put the nameplate together and show you how that's done. In this specific file, I have three different options for nameplates, one with paw prints, hearts, and a blank one. So I'm just going to work with the paw prints and it's going to fit snugly right in here once it's printed and it's going to be a layered piece. So it's going to be on a different cut of wood. All right, so now I'm going to put together my text for the name. So I'm going to go over to the create and edit text. 
type in my name. I'm just going to use Riley. And then I'm going to change the text. So go up top to text, text and font, and change it. I'm just going to use Boogaloo just because I like that font for this. And click Apply. I'm going to X out of that. Now I'm going to select my font with the selector tool up here. It's selected now, so I'm going to go to Path and Object to Path so that it will print properly. Now I'm going to resize the text. And we'll just put it to about that size. That's good enough. Now I'm going to just overlap it slightly. As you can see, overlapped right here. And I'm going to center it first. So I'm going to so have this selected and hold down my shift and select the nameplate. Go to Object, Align and Distribute, and Center on Vertical Axis. Now it's centered. Now I want to create a no fill on this text. So I'm going to select my text and go to the bottom left corner over here and select this X for no fill. Then I'm going to slide over to the red over here just because I use red for cutting. And I'm going to right click and set stroke as my stroke color. Okay, so now you can see obviously it is overlapped. Now we have to unify this whole piece so that it cuts properly. So I'm going to select my text again and hold down shift and select my nameplate. Then I'm going to go up to object and ungroup. You need everything ungrouped. So now each piece is ungrouped individually and keep that all selected still and then go back to path and union. Okay, so now it's all one piece and you can cut this and it will cut properly. So now it will, once it's printed, go up top in here and it looks like it fits pretty nicely with the picture so I think I'm gonna keep everything as it is. Now just to show you some engraving on the nameplate, if you would like to engrave, you just go to create text again and you can engrave whatever you want. I'm just going to put in loving memory, just a typical phrase. And I'm going to go back up to text and change that font. And I'm just going to put whatever looks good. So we'll try that. X out of here. And again, you have to select your text and then go to path and object to path to create a path for the text. Now I'm going to just enlarge it a little bit. And that might be just a little too big. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And you can put that wherever you please. And like I said, I usually make my text um, engraved pink. So I'll just leave it pink just to show you that. And if it is cursive, you're going to need to also unify that again because it may not print properly. So just go up to Object, Ungroup, so everything's ungrouped, and then go to Path and Union. So now it's all one piece and it will engrave right properly. Okay. And that is pretty much it. So now you're ready to print everything. I'm going to go ahead and just group this all together. So it's one piece. I just did control G after selecting everything, but you can also go up to object again and do it that way. So now it is ready to print. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in making this pet memorial yourself, I'll have the link in the description box below on where you can purchase it. And if you're interested in buying your own Glowforge, please feel free to use my referral code also in the description box below on where you can get money off. 
plus I will get credits too, which me and my family truly appreciate. So if you have questions, let me know and thanks for watching.